Okay. Still, people are still jumping in. So give me just another moment. All right. So one more time, you are all muted, but that doesn't mean that I don't want to talk with you. It's important that I do talk with you. So feel free at any time. We don't have to hold your questions till the end or any of that stuff. Just when you have a question or a comment, unmute yourself and speak up. No problem. Everything's great. Uh, my name is Luis Escobar, and uh, today is Monday, January 23rd, 2023. This is a pre-race meeting for the La Cuesta Ranch trail run that's scheduled to happen this Saturday. That is January 28th. And it's actually a kind of a two-day thing because we do have activities on Friday, the 27th. And I'll talk about that now. So um, the purpose of this call is to just kind of uh, review the runner guide and more importantly, answer any questions. I know that some of you are new to this event and new to me and, and um, you may have questions. So that's why we're here. I'm recording this meeting. I'll uh, make this link to this meeting will be available to everyone when we're finished here so if you have a friend that's not here but they're concerned about not missing out they'll be able to uh, review this later i'm still letting people in i guess that's why i'm kind of dragging my feet here all right so this is i believe the seventh year that we've done this a uh, seventh annual annual and uh it's a beautiful location the la cuesta ranch it's owned by the miosi family it's a historic property on the central coast it's located between highway 101 and uh cal poly poly canyon uh it's uh absolutely beautiful it's uh i think they've got something around 1400 acres there it's an active working cattle ranch it is private and uh you are welcome to be there this saturday but you are not welcome to be there after that or before that. So don't go there on your own ever. Um, we're always reluctant to publish maps because we don't want the public just jumping fences and recreating on, on this family's property. But uh, they, they're they kind enough to allow us to come there and uh, we just need to respect it. We are 100% welcome to be there Friday after 12 p.m. until Saturday night. And so let's come and have a great time. With that, just remember that this is a private property. It's their home. Uh, my friend Gabriel Miosi, who you are all going to meet, um, they live there. This is literally their home and we're recreating in their yard. So let's treat it with uh, the respect that it deserves. First thing about that, when you enter the ranch property, you're gonna be on a long driveway, which is really a street. Um, it's important that we drive slowly five miles an hour, barely creeping, crawling. There's going to be runners running around. There's going to be a lot of activity. There's cattle, there's dogs. So let's uh, make sure that we're driving very, very slow once we come onto the ranch property. Of course, we don't want to litter uh, on the trail or anywhere. Um, if you see trash, just please pick it up and carry it out with you. Uh, again, there's it's a working cattle ranch. I'm not sure how many um, cattle are roaming around, but we're definitely going to interact with cows. So everything that goes with cows is going to be happening. Um, there's going to be calves. There's going to be cow poop. There's going to be cow pee. There's going to be cow stuff. And so if you don't like that, you, this is going to be a bad experience for you. Um, the, we've conducted lots of events where there is cattle. No one's ever been attacked or anything like that. But uh, there's definitely cows. Uh, one thing about being on a ranch, this ranch or any ranch, one thing that there's gates. And oftentimes those gates are, are used to keep the cattle in certain spots. So the, the etiquette is universal ranch languages. You leave all gates as you found them. So if by chance we've marked the course to a gate that's closed, open the gate, close it behind you. Simple as that. If you get to a gate that's open, just run through it. Don't close it. Leave all gates as you found them. It's very, very important. The other rule about this ranch is there's absolutely no open fires. So uh, there are some of you that are going to be spending the night there. You can't have an open campfire at your car. Um, I'm sure it's fine to have a, a designated camp stove, uh, uh, 
you know, propane stove, that's not a problem, but no open wood fire. There may be uh, an opportunity for us to have a common fire near the barn and that will be controlled, but no fires at your, at your individual cars or camps. Anybody have any questions about the ranch, about the family, the Miosi family or etiquette on the, on the ranch itself? Any questions for me? All right, let's go over some schedule. Uh, Friday, this Friday, January 27th, at 8 a.m., we're going to meet and mark the trail. And we always need help. And there's no experience necessary. Uh, if you want to join us, um, please arrive prior to 8 a.m. at the ranch gate. And the directions uh, to the ranch are in the runner guide. In fact, you can all go to allwedoisrun.com and there's two downloads there. There's a waiver and then there's a runner guide. You can uh, download it and there you'll find uh, GPS directions to the ranch gate. Anyway, Friday morning, 8 a.m. Meet there prior to 8 a.m. Be prepared to hike. So bring your running gear and uh, that's it. And we'll, we should be finished sometime around 1 p.m. And you're welcome to come for all or some. We have a group of people that are already uh, signed up to do it, but we could always use more. In fact, at this moment, let me, is Mich Michelle Evans, are you on this call? Can you, if you are, can you jump in, say hello, introduce yeah. yourself and Hi. there you are. I'm Michelle, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm the volunteer coordinator. And like Lewis said, we could always use more help, especially on race day. We do have some openings for aid stations. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's gonna be a great day. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, it should be dry. Uh, there's a lot of people volunteering. So when you do see them, make sure you say thank you. Um, they're spending their weekends out here helping all of us. So that would be great. But yeah, um, I'll put my email address in the, the chat right now. And that way, if you do want to reach out and volunteer, or you could always go out to um, just ultra sign up and click on the volunteer link and you'll see a bunch of options there. Uh, what time do you want volunteers to arrive? So it depends on what you're doing. Um, so after this happens, I'm going to send out an email. And that way, we've got all the times confirmed from this meeting. And then I'll um, put down what times you should be there and where you're going to be, most importantly. So if you have gone to ultra sign up and you've registered to volunteer, Michelle will be following up with specifics um, soon. If you haven't signed up, but you still want to volunteer, you can do it. You can go to allwedoisrun.com and you can click on the La Cuesta Ranch and then you'll see a, a space to for volunteers. You could also just show up on Friday prior to 8 a.m. if you want to help with uh, trail marking. Michelle put her address, her email address in the chat. You can send her a note. In the runner guide at the very bottom is my email address. You can send me a, a note and I can connect you with Michelle. Either way, if you want to help, we'd appreciate it. We can't do this stuff without um, assistance. Okay, so that's Friday morning. And that's at the ranch, nine eight at eight a.m. Then we have something special. This is the first time that we have um, partnered with REI, REI San Luis Obispo, beautiful store. It's in the I don't think they call it the Madonna Shopping Center any longer, but it's at the Madonna Road Shopping Center in San Luis Obispo. Big beautiful store, relatively new store, and I'm super excited to have this partnership with them. All that means is we're gonna be hosting some pre-race activities there on Friday afternoon. Um, one of the incentives that uh, REI has, they want you to come, they want you to visit their store, they want you to buy stuff, of course. And um, I, I think they might be giving store discounts, but I'm certain that they're gonna be giving free memberships for non-members. And I, I, I think that there is a small fee to be a member of REI, and it looks like they're gonna waive that fee for um, participants of the La Cuesta Ranch trail run. I think they're going to give you a card. Um, in addition to, to that, uh, our friend Tyler Tomasella will be there and he's been making, uh, let's see, Brian Fagundi says $30 is the current lifetime membership. So pretty cool. So they're going to waive that. Um, so there you go. Uh, Tyler Tomasella will be there doing his tintype uh, portraits 
So if you haven't seen that or you haven't been tracking on that, it's really pretty cool. Tyler, are you on this call? No. Okay. Well, uh, Tyler will be at REI setting up his photo booth outside of REI in San Luis Obispo. He'll be there around 3 p.m. and he'll be out there doing portraits as long as appropriate. And then in addition to that, he'll be at the ranch all day on Saturday doing his vintage photography. So if you want a cool portrait made, uh, Tyler will be there and he'll make it happen for you. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Sarah Groman is a physical therapist uh, up in San Francisco. She's coming down to uh, to provide her services. I don't think she's charging for anything. Um, so you'll be able to meet her on Friday, and then she'll be at the race all day on Saturday as well. And I think she's camping out with us Friday night, her and her boyfriend. Uh, we have representatives from the Runners for Public Lands, Mike Scarber. Scarber, are you on the call? No. Nope. All right. Um, so Mike Scarber uh, is uh, on the board for Runners for Public Lands. They're a nonprofit that advocates for uh, public land, recreational trails, and they are, they are a big presence at our events, and, and Mike will be there. In addition to that, uh, uh, Zachary Friedley will be there, adaptive athlete, the founder of the uh, Born to Adapt uh, running series. Zach, are you here? All right. Um, I can tell you this. If you're interested to hear an interview with those guys, um, you can go to Road Dog Podcast. I'll put it in the chat. And there is a sp specific uh, podcast episode that published today, and it's all about... Um, La Cuesta Ranch. Am I making any sense? You guys have any questions about anything I just said? Okay, cool. Yeah, actually, I do have a question. Um, question about, uh, are you going to have, we're going to allow drop bags? Good question. Um, so there's not, not drop bag specific. It's not like we're going to, like you're going to bring a bag and we're going to take it out onto the course. But you can stage your personal gear at the start finish area. And I'll talk about the, the format of the course in detail here in just a minute. But but yes, you're going to pass the 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 central location, the, the Miosi barn, the start finish area. Um, you're going to pass it twice. If you're in the if you're in the 10K, you're going to do one lap, boom, there's your gear. If you're in the 25K, you're going to do um, a lap, come back to the barn. You can resupply yourself. Then you're going to do another lap, and then boom, you're done. If you're in the 50K, you're going to do that both laps twice. I'll explain in detail. So I'm not sure if that answered your question. But yes, you can bring your personal gear, stage it at the start finish. Does that help? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, cool. Um, Friday. So, okay, so that. Uh, Runners for Public Lands will be there. Um, Zachary Friedley will be there. We're going to be showing a film uh, called Ugh. Everybody Runs. And it is a story of Sean Wall, adaptive athlete. And it's a very, very cool, inspirational, beautiful film, 20 minutes long. We're going to show it twice, uh, 4.15 and 5.15. However, we can play it as often as necessary. So when you come, come to REI, check in, get your gear, get your uh, you know, running packet, pick up your number, your shirt, all of that stuff, and then hang out. Meet Tyler Tomasello, the photographer. Meet physical therapist Sarah Groman, Mike Scarber from Runners for Public Lands, Zachary Friedley. Watch the film. And then at six o'clock, I will do a detailed pre-race meeting. And so I'll have up-to-date information about the course, very specific information, answer all your questions. That'll happen at 6. And then that's it. That's what's going to happen starting at 4 p.m. at REI in San Luis Obispo. All of this is in the runner guide. Any questions about that? And we can check in at REI, did you say before? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think I made that clear enough. But yes, that is the whole purpose. We're having early runner check-in between 4 and 6 p.m. at REI in San Luis Obispo. 
It's not mandatory. Sometimes people think that when we have early check-in, they get all excited, like, oh, do we have to do it? No, you can check in Saturday morning also. But if you want to get a jump on it, come to REI, hang out with us, and uh, and you can check in then, anytime between four and six. We'll be staged in the back of the store. So you're going to come through the REI store. We're on the back left-hand side. There's a designated area for these community events back there. All right. Any questions? Perfect. Saturday, the 28th, race day. Uh, you might have mentioned it, but what's the distance between the REI and La Cuesta? I guess I could look it up, but is it a quick drive or? Yeah, it's a quick drive, but it does involve driving and it does involve jumping on the freeway. Uh, I would say it's between three and six miles. Oh, okay. It, you're not going to you. walk it. Yeah, you're going to need to drive it. Yeah. And then also, I, I maybe it should have mentioned camping. So we are allowed to car camp on Friday night. So if you want to do that, again, it's in the runner guide. I need you to contact my wife, Beverly, and let her know that you're coming. And it's $20. And you can come and dry camp at the ranch. There's a designated spot. There's a large parking lot right near the barn, 150 yards or so from the start finish area. And we can camp there. I'll be there in my motor home. It's not a campground. There's no amenities. There's no hookups, nothing like that. It's just a parking lot, dirt parking lot. You can park, park there, camp in your car, your camper, your trailer, whatever it is. There's plenty of space. You can do that. The one big thing is no open fires, no litter, and no pooping on the dirt. <laughs> we'll have some portable toilets there. And that's it. That's the extent of the amenities for parking. But it's $20 and you're right there at the start. You wake up in the morning and you're there for race day. All right. Any questions about that? Megan, Lewis. access to fresh water. That's a great question and I should have included it. No. So, I mean, we will have bottled water for the run, obviously, at the, at the aid stations. But you should definitely bring your own drinking water also. I would. If I was coming to this thing, I'd bring at least a gallon of drinking water for myself. There'll be water on the tables, but bring your own. There are faucets there, but uh, it's it's well water. You're welcome to drink it. I believe the Miosi family drink it, drinks it, but it's not what you are thinking, right? It's the well water, so it could have some uh, texture. Does the camping fee cover the parking? Yeah, so it's $20. You pay the $20. You come, you spend the night, and then you leave on Saturday. Um, how's how's the uh, the drive to the campground from the roads? Is it paved, or is should we? Is it muddy, or how good question? It? And um, so the approach to the to the parking lot is paved. So you come onto the ranch property, you go through a formal ranch gate, and then you drive maybe a quarter of a mile on pavement, you make a left-hand turn onto DG, so uh, granite. So it's not dirt, but it's also not pavement. There's a small incline, but that's not an issue. You should, I mean, this is a wedding venue, right? So this is a designated wedding parking lot. So it's all flat, graded, DG, safe. Uh, let's see, somebody said, I missed it. Did you say $20 to park? It's $20 to camp. If you come on Friday, it's $20. If you come on Saturday, there is a fee, $10 per car. So when you arrive at the gate, there's going to be someone there, hand them $10, you drive in, you park. This is the money that we use to pay for the ranch. We're renting the ranch. And so we use this $10 to offset that. Cash only, preferably. If you if you show up without cash, then you could come to runner check in and we could do Venmo or, or something like that, but preferably hand them paper. Uh, car camping or can we park in, or can we camp in our tents? Yeah, is I would say that's fine as long as we're not you're not building a big village, right? Like a lot of stakes in the ground and you know a, a, a small backpacking tent. 
Perfect. No problem. Remember, it's not a campground. It's all trash. Yeah, have- all trash. Yeah, yeah. Take everything home with you if you can, please. So whatever you bring, take it out of there with you. Um, if we have family coming to watch, can they pay the parking fee day of and enter and exit? Well, yes, sure. So Greg Rice. So Greg, let's say you show up in the morning when we open the gate at 5.30 in the morning, you pay $10, you park your car, and then you're running around. Then your family shows up at nine o'clock and they want to come in. No problem. Um, they pay 10 bucks, they park, they come and they hang out. Do we need to pack up our campsite prior to the start? No. So you can have your gear and everything in the parking lot, uh, start the run. And in fact, you can even, if you're doing the, the 25K or the 50K, you're doing some loops, right? So you can go back to your personal camp and age yourself and then leave. And then just the, the main thing is obviously, uh, Sean, is when we're done, when you leave, that there's no sign that you were ever there. So don't leave a trash bag there. Don't leave any stuff there. So just take everything when you go home. Cool. Is there a fee if we don't drive? No, that's okay. I mean, no, it's $10 per car. It's going to be a walk though. I'll tell you that if you're coming from, I mean, there's really nowhere to park off campus, uh, off the ranch. I think somebody said that they're coming from Cal Poly. So maybe you're a student. It's a, it's a walk. I mean, once you're on the ranch property, it's, it's not like, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a little bit of a walk. So budget plenty of time. I love all these questions. This is exciting to me that you're all here because it tells me that you are interested and it's important to you. And so it's important to me. So thank you so much for being here and thanks for the questions. All right. Let me get back to my list and please do not hesitate. Jump in. If you have a question, I'm gonna, I want to answer it. Saturday morning, 5 a.m., the ranch gates open. Don't come at 4.30 because the gate will be closed. So you come at 5 o'clock. Um, and I believe that you're going to be greeted by my friend Stan Otremba. So Stan will be there, the gate will open, you'll come in, you'll hand him $10, and then he'll point you to, towards the parking lot. Off you go. If you're camping, obviously you're already there because you arrived on Friday after 12 p.m. How much per cow? Brenda Luce is in the house asking cow questions. Brenda, I will answer that later. <laughs> Uh, love the fact that various families are allowing you to host runs on their private space. We are lucky. Well, let me tell you something about that. That's a good comment and it's a great observation. And um, yeah, it, it, we have established a beautiful relationship with several ranches on the Central Coast. And uh, it is an absolute honor because these people are inviting the public to come and recreate on their property. And it's it's a real treat. And so we need to recognize that and um, let them know. You're going to meet Gabriel Miosi this weekend and go up and say hello, shake his hand and uh, t- you know, t- tell him what you think. Um, they love their home. They're very proud of it. And, they, and he's happy to interact with you, which is important. You know, we don't want to mess that up. So we don't want to make a fire. They don't want fires. We don't want to uh, leave any trash, obviously. We don't want dogs, our dogs, chasing cattle around. So we just need to be respectful. All right, so Saturday, we open the gate at 5 a.m. Six o'clock in the morning on Saturday, we'll have runner check-in. We'll be ready at six o'clock, not before. Sometimes people think, I'm going to come to the runner check-in table 15 minutes early and help these people out. You know, I'm going to get there early. You're not really helping us out because we're not really ready for you. So it puts us behind. So uh, best thing to do is not show up until 6 a.m. So you could come in at five, but don't come to the runner table, check in until six. If you want to help us, come on Friday at REI. That helps us. We'll start the 50K run at five, I'm sorry, at 7 a.m. 
This is different than what's listed on Ultra Sign Up. It says 8 a.m. The 50K will start at 7 a.m. And this is, we did this because we want to have that extra hour at the end of the day to get everybody off the course prior to dark at five. So we boosted the 50K up one hour. So it starts at seven. At eight o'clock, the 10K and the 25K will start together. By the way, there's about 250 people registered total. About 50 of them are in the 50K and the other 200 are uh, divided between the 10K and the 25K. So it's a good group, should be fun. Listen carefully, if you're in the 50K, you have five hours to complete the first 25 kilometers. All right, so no one will start a lap after 12 p.m. on Saturday. So if you're there after 12, that's it. It's a cutoff. We can't let you go back out. Again, it's because of the daylight. And I promised Gabriel Miosi, the owner of the ranch, that we're all going to be off the ranch before dark or we're going to be off the course before dark. So I don't want to mess that up. So I think that if you start at 12 o'clock on the second lap, the second 25K, should be plenty of time for you to complete and, and be done by five. And then five o'clock is the final cutoff for all events. So even if you're in the 10K, you have until 5 p.m. to finish that 10 kilometers. Any questions about Saturday's schedule, start times, and cutoffs? Cool. All right. There will be food for purchase starting at 7 a.m. And just basic stuff. Hand food, I call it. So breakfast burritos. I think it's Julie, are you on this call? No. Um, so we have someone coming and they're going to set up and they'll have breakfast burritos with co coffee or a hot chocolate. My wife told me that I misspelled cocoa. C-O-C-O? -O? No. So uh, I think it's $10 if you want a breakfast burrito and coffee or a hot chocolate. And there's also vegetarian options. Uh, and then they'll be making burgers. So for $15, you can get a hamburger, chips, and a drink. Also vegetarian options. So that's it. Breakfast, burritos, coffee, burgers, chips, drink, $10, $15. No one's obligated to buy anything, but it's there. I will say this. Probably you want to get it sooner than, than later because they'll they probably run out. Again, I want to remind you, Tyler Tomasello will be there doing his vintage portraits. Uh, Danny George from Old Orchid and Chad Hinkle and Louisa Wood uh, together when they bring their instruments. They call themselves the participants and they'll be playing music at the barn on Saturday. So we're hoping that you don't just show up and run and go home. Come and you know, participate, be part of this thing and, and enjoy, hang out, spend some time with us. Michelle Evans, our volunteer quarter co coordinator, is also a great action photographer, and she'll be there photographing the event. Her photos for purchase will be available um, after the event. It takes her about seven to 10 days to get the gallery all set up. Once all the photos are available, we'll send you a link, and you can go there and um, purchase some pictures. Michelle, anything to say about that? Just smile. All right, there you go. Again, physical therapy services will be available. I don't think that there's a fee. Uh, doctor of physical therapy, uh, Sarah Groman will be there. We talked about camping. Anytime after 12 p.m. on Friday the 27th, you can arrive. It's primitive, dispersed, dry camping, $20 per vehicle. Primitive means there's nothing. Dispersed means there's no reservations. You just find a spot and you park. Dry camping means that there's no running water, no hookups, no electrical, none of that stuff. Parking on Saturday, $10 per car. Waivers, it's important that you show up with a printed waiver. So please go to allwedoisrun.com, click on the waiver, download it, print it, read it, sign it, bring it. Everyone on the property needs to have a waiver. So the person that asked about, can my family come? Yes but we still would need them to, to uh, sign a waiver. So if you could please have, you know, go print waivers for them and make sure that they have it. And then they come to the runner check-in table, even though they're not running, but come to the table 
and just say, I'm here a spectator, here's my waiver. Is it too late to register? No, registration is still open, I believe, until Wednesday. And then you could also race day register, or even better, Friday at REI. Okay, waivers. Okay, let's talk about the course. The course, the 10K course is one 10K loop. We're planning to mark it with yellow ribbons. The cutoff time is 5 p.m. Starts at 8. Got to be off the course by 5. One big lap. It's hard. This is not an easy 10K. It's hard. I don't have the topography in front of me right now or the or the elevation gain, but it's it's beefy. A 25K. So imagine a figure eight. You have two courses that are side by side. They meet in the middle. That's where the barn is. There's a 10 and a half mile loop over here on this side of the ranch. And then there's a 10K loop over here on this side of the ranch. The 10 and a half mile loop is marked with pink. So the 25K starts. You guys are following pink ribbons for 10 and a half miles. Brings you back to the barn. Then you start the yellow loop, which is 10K. You run that, brings you back to the barn. Add that up, it's 25 kilometers. So you do a pink loop, you do a yellow loop, that's it, 25K. If you're in the 50K, you just do that twice. Pink loop, yellow loop, pink loop, yellow loop. Boom. Cool? Any questions? Um, yeah, I have a question. Are you able to comment on where the elevation is going to be? If it's consistent near the beginning or near the end? I'm doing the 25K. Um, yeah, I can. Let me, if you guys are patient, give me just a moment. I'll find it in Cal Topo and I'll, I'll give it to you right now. Give me just a moment though. I should have dug this out beforehand. In fact, it's available somewhere. Maybe in, if you go to Ultra Sign Up and type in La Cuesta Ranch, I think you, the links to it are there. Yeah, the links are there. I just downloaded them. All right, cool. And then if you go to Cal Topo, you can you can see the profile. And just generally speaking, there's uh, in the first. Uh, quarter of the event there's a climb then you drop down into a big valley and then the last quarter is a big climb on this big rocky ridge it's not easy i just i don't know how to say that and i i think sometimes people come to this run and think oh it's just this at a wedding venue and it's just kind of a throwaway easy 25k it's not it's not it's it's got some spice all right, so 10K, one lap on the 10K course, which is marked yellow. So ready, set, go, you follow yellow. 25K, ready, set, go, you follow pink, then yellow. 50K, pink, yellow, pink, yellow. All right. There's an aid station in the center of the course. The aid stations are about every five miles apart. So you're going to get to... Uh, after about five miles, you're going to get to the first aid station. I'm talking for the uh, 10 to 10 mile loop. And it's going to be full on aid. There'll be basic stuff, water, ice, soda, um, snacks, and then the full array of hammer nutrition products. So everything they have, we, we have. Say hi to Gabriel Zavala uh, at, the, at the main aid station on the course. You might smell his special herbs before you even arrive at the aid station. Timing and results. Um, we do manual timing. That means there's no chips. You're going to wear your bib number on the front of your body. At the conclusion of each lap, you need to check in at the timing table. They need to physically see you and then enter your name into a computer system. If you don't do that, then we don't have record of you completing that lap. And so it's your responsibility to check in at the timing table at the conclusion of each lap. 
make eye contact with the person at the at the computer and say, hey, I'm uh, Joe Blow, number 15. You got me? And then watch them put your name into the computer. And then they say, yeah, gotcha. And then go off and continue. All right. So this is in L.A. or Boston. We don't have a, a timing system. We have a timing system, but it's not uh, chip time. With that, too, uh, you know, this isn't the Olympics. This is a casual run on a ranch. And, uh, you know, we're expecting people to come to compete. That's fine. And you paid us to time it. We're going to time it. We're going to set up an accurate course and all that stuff. But if something gets weird, if you have a dispute, you're unhappy with, uh, uh, with your results, it's not that big of a deal. Just send us an email, send me an email, and I'll adjust it. Okay. So, uh, and then one thing to remember too, at this run and any run, your watch might not exactly match you know, our system. So when you finish, if there's a discrepancy, just calmly, coolly, like an adult, come over and say, hey, my watch says this, your time says that, what can we do? And then we'll negotiate, all right? Bring me a beer and I'll give you any time you want. Okay, the results will be published at allwedoisrun.com. It takes us about three or four days, or two or three days to get the results um, verified and then published. So be patient, it's not automatic. We only have a few rules, and they, but they are important. Uh, no fires, it's important. No dogs on the course. So you can bring your dog on a leash, have it at the camp, but not on the race course. And we have had dog fights, and that really sucks. We like to bring our dogs, but we don't, you know, if your dog's aggressive, being a jerk, don't bring it, please. Um, don't let the dog off the leash. Do not bring any dogs that are not livestock friendly. So if your dog is not used to seeing cattle or horses, don't bring them. It, it gets weird. And then uh, I don't want to damage my relationship with the ranch. So bring friendly dogs on a leash. Don't put them on the race course. Our insurance requires that you don't wear headphones or earbuds or anything like that. In fact, our, our insurance specifically talks about dogs on the race course, headphones and earbuds. Now I can't stand there and, and pull them out of your ears, but I'm telling you, please don't do that. No pacers. So it's just you. There's gonna be lots of people out there. There's 250 people registered. So plenty of folks to interact with, plenty of people to run with, but uh, everybody on the race course needs to have a bib number on. They need to be registered with a signed waiver with the bib number on their body. Again, another insurance thing. Littering, obviously no littering. Trekking poles, fine with me. If you want to bring trekking poles, um, bring them. In fact, you might need them. The Rocky Ridge is a rocky ridge. Any questions about those rules? No fires, no dogs, no headphones, no pacers, no littering. Trekking poles, okay. Early start, somebody's asking, can I start the, the 25K at 7 a.m.? Prefer that you not do that, but uh, it's not the end of the world if a couple of people do that. But here's the deal. If you do that, um, you are not eligible to win anything. So you're, you're in the 25K run, but you are not in the race anymore. All right? So you need to start at 8 o'clock with everybody else. If you're going to do a, a, an early start, I need you to check in at the, at the check-in table in advance and let everybody know. Make sure that you talk to Beverly and tell her, or Manly, Beverly or Manly, remember those two names. If you're going to want to request an early start, talk to Beverly or Manly prior to 7 a.m., and then we can make that happen. But you are not in the race, all right? Earbuds, specifically in ear, bone conduction headphones are also not allowed. Uh, just you need to be able to hear. All right. So if you want to bone conducting, that's fine with me, as long as you can hear other people talking. This is what hey, I Lewis, Yeah. I have a, a comment that I uh, would like to add. If people check in at REI, and somehow they get sick. Yeah, yeah. Don't show up. They need to call us and let us know. 
because we don't have you don't have to double check in also Saturday morning. So we're assuming if you get your bib, you're in on the course. So this happens: people early check in, they get their shirt and their bib number, and then they don't come to the run. I guess they just want a shirt, which is totally fine. But then what the the problem for on our end, as you might imagine, we assume that you're out there on the course. And then at the end of the day, we can't account for you like, hey, what happened to Greg Lowe? He was he checked in, but we don't know where he's at. So now we think he's lost on the race course. So now we have to go search for this guy. Turns out he's at Harry's Cafe drinking uh, tequila. So it's important that if you've you you must tell us, please, if you're not going to run. In fact, if you if you decide to leave before you complete your distance, also check in. So DNF did not finish. If you're in the in the 50 in the 25k and you do the one loop, the 10, the 10 and a half mile loop, and he's like, ah, to hell with this. I'm done. I'm gonna go to breakfast. Fine. But check in at the table and tell us, hey, I'm done. I, I don't want to go anymore. All right. Manly, is that good? Okay. How's the cell reception on the property? I think it's so-so. Beverly, do you remember? Good cell? Yeah, I, I, there, there must be cell reception because I don't remember it not being good. It's not, it's not great right at the, at the barn area, but when you're out, it's not as, it's pretty good. Yeah, I would think that sounds about right, Louisa. So the barn area is sort of in a in a valley. <clears throat> but immediately you climb up and out. So you I'm sure that there's good cell reception up there. Uh which service Verizon AT&T? I don't know. Well, I have Verizon and it I don't have too much too many problems. Uh can I get there at eight or nine on Friday night, or is that too late? Um, yeah, you could do that, but if please in advance contact Beverly. She's on the runner guide as the camp person. Let her know what your plan is in advance. That shouldn't be a problem. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty much done. Uh, awards, we have a, a finisher's award for everybody. Uh, it's not a medal, but we have a couple of different awards that you can choose from. Branded says La Cuesta Ranch. Um, so all, everybody that finishes will get something. Everyone's going to get a shirt. It's part of your registration, your bib number. Um, we have special awards for first overall male and female in each category. Just that. we don't. There's not three deep. There's no age categories, none of that stuff. It's just first overall male, first overall female in each of the three distances. If you have my final thing here is to invite you to join us at the Born to Run Ultra Marathon, uh, April 15th. It's in Los, Alam Los Olivos, and it's another uh, event on a private ranch. It's multi-day, super, super cool. If you haven't been, I would suggest that you do it. It's, uh, if you enjoy this event, you will really like the Born to Run Ultra Marathon. Um, anybody have any questions, any comments? Anybody wanna say hello, introduce yourself? I'm pretty much finished. And I, but I'm happy to sit and talk with all of you all morning. Anybody have any questions? Uh, Louisa Wood is here. Oh, Louisa, can you say hi? You, I, I mentioned that you're going to be there playing music. And hi, everyone. Yep, I'm playing music. Please don't expect a lot. <laughs> Lower those expectations. And my uh, kids are all going to be running too, so I'll be out in the course with them. Okay, I'm excited well, that the weather is going to be good, and the trail conditions should really be perfect. That's the plan. Um, I'm up right at the moment in Northern California. I haven't been down there for about three or four days. When I was down there, it was raining, and so I know that it's sunny and warm, and I'm expecting green grass and uh, high times. Things are drying out pretty nicely, so it should be, I think, perfect. Perfecto. All right. Uh, I know you guys need to get to work. So um, thank you so much for being here.
please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. Uh, Jerry says, can we drop down in distance? Yes, you can drop down in distance anytime prior to the start of the event. So if you need to change your distance, send me an email now and I'll make it happen um, or before the race starts. So if you're in the 25K and you do the first loop and then you say, hey, I've decided I'm going to drop down. No, it's too late. That's called a DNF, did not finish. So you, we're all going to start and finish the distance that we're registered in at the start. So you can drop down prior to that. Does that answer your question, Jerry? All right. All right, guys. Don't hesitate to contact. Go ahead. Somebody saying something? No? Okay. All right. I am excited to see all of you. Please come up and say hi. Uh, don't hesitate to send me a note in advance. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, I'm all about it. Um, otherwise, that's it. I'll look forward to seeing you hopefully Friday between 4 and 6 o'clock at REI. Try to be at REI at 6. We'll do a, a runner brief, up-to-date information. I'll look forward to seeing you there, okay? REI, 4 to 6 on Friday, Miosi Ranch, um, all day Saturday. See you soon. Bye, everybody. Hey, Lewis. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'm not going to be able to get there in the morning, but I'll, we'll be there like one o'clock, two o'clock, something like that. On? On Friday. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah, yeah. Just not like before I've come and right. been there in the morning, did set up. I, Mara has a doctor appointment. We'll leave right after, but we'll get lunch in town and then head in to figure out where we're going to park the car for this night. And then we'll head it over at three with or before three, help set up. REI, do whatever we need, the whole REI, the morning, all that. Okay, that sounds good. I'm looking forward to seeing you, Manly. Yeah, you too. Too bad we missed uh, this winter again, like last year, but the weather wasn't so great either besides the schedule. So It was just pouring rain, so yeah. Stuff we'll find to, another time. Tough to figure that out, huh? Greg, how are you? Hey, Louis. Yes, Greg. Nice. Um, is the PA system and everything, you'll have it all set up and, yeah. and Ch is Chad going to, I don't see Chad on here. Is Chad going to be doing all of that too? Is helping set that up? Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. Cause I don't know anything about that. I'm a no, classical I'll, musician. So <laughs> we'll, we'll have it uh, all set. Uh, okay. We we'll only have two microphones though. Ch I have another one. I got okay. one for Christmas this year. Woo. So I'll bring that up. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that that's there. Sir. That's there. Because awesome. those Danny, George, me, and Chad. So we'll be, we'll need three microphones. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Greg Lowe, when are we going to see you? Unmute. You got to find that, you got you to find that unmute button there, Greg. <laughs> Showing your age. He looks like a confused squirrel. Oh, where's there? Where do I go here? <laughs> oh, really? Seriously. Greg, you're still on mute, honey. All right, Friday morning, probably oh. by, by 10. Oh, okay, great. I'll be on the ranch property, so um, shoot me a text. I should be able to receive it, and then I can find you. So I'll be at your service uh, all day Friday. Okay, all right. Awesome, man. I'm excited to see all of you. It's been yeah. a bit. Although Hi, I, it's not going to be so exciting to see you, you, Lewis, because it's almost like you're sitting in my car every monday following into tuesday while i'm driving back and forth to work uh, i can't believe you, podcast i can't believe you fit through all of that <laughs> all right guys all right, guys i'll see you guys friday or saturday i'll be yep. there for sure all right, bye. See you soon. bye everyone thank you